These forty days of Lent, O Lord, with you we fast and pray. Teach us to discipline our wills and follow, Lord, your way. Good morning and welcome to St. Patrick's. And let us now begin our liturgy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This morning we celebrate the parable of the prodigal son. So as we think about the prodigal son, his brother, and his father, and how the story all fits in, which one of the three do we identify with? As we think about it and we take a moment now to acknowledge our own sins and to ask the Lord for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord, the lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me, let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God has, was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I will get up and go to my Father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off for a distant country. When he squandered his inheritance on a life of disposition, when he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck the country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat the fill of the pods in which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more, more than enough food to eat? And here I am dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he went up, so he got up and went back to his father. While he was st still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion, and ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly bring me the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. Let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead, and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son, who had been out in the field, and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. And the servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast with, on my, with my friends. But when your son returns, who has swallowed up all your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fatted calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your, father, your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. The parable of the prodigal son is the longest of all the parables, a story of a generous father. It's a story of two boys, one younger boy and an older boy. The older son is faithful to his father, faithful of all that he has expected of him. The younger son asks and receives his inheritance of land. Two important points about land. The oldest son is supposed to have a double share of the inheritance. The younger brother is to have a third of the state. The father divides the land equally among the two. Second, the division of property ordinarily awaits the death of the father. There were provisions in traditional law for penalties when the share was withdrawn ahead of time. The younger son cuts his ties with his family and having no regrets about his action, squanders all his inheritance and is forced to hire himself out. He takes a job tending pigs. Ancient days, caring for pigs evoked the idea of a loss of something. Hunger finally brings the younger son to his senses. He says, you know, I've been, I've, I have been better off being a slave to my father than living, I am now living, the life I'm now living. He returns home as a hired servant. He turns around and he repents. He has a menanoia, meaning to turn around from what, he was, what was killing you 
to turn to what will give you life. The Father's all-embracing love is what moves the Son to take responsibility for what he has done. The Father gives compassion to his Son. Compassion is consoling, transforming words in Scripture. It is an attitude and a way of life. Divine compassion embraces all of life. The Father's compassion leads to his Son to a change of attitude and a change of heart. He is surprised because his Father sees him from a distance and comes with open arms and embraces him. He gives him gifts and he brings out the fatted calf and let the party of his and held a party for his son. The elder son's anger and self-righteousness makes him resentful. Not even the return of his brother will make him want to share in the family celebration. He wants to celebrate with his friends. The father goes out to the elder son. The elder son cannot see this kind of gesture. He says to his father, I've been faithful all these years, but you've not even given me a fatted calf that I might celebrate with my friends. He is caught in his own anger. He is totally frustrated with his father. The father must be now a negotiator. With tenderness, he tries to help his son grasp the fullness of what his brother's true return truly means. He knows that the son has been invited to celebrate with a family. Reconciliation has occurred. Celebration is to happen. The elder son has been called to the table. We too are all called. Reconciliation demands that we let go so that we can join the celebration. The story speaks of envy. Envy is when we become sad when somebody else is blessed. Have you ever been envious? When you are envious, you're sad that somebody else has been blessed in some way. It is a no-win situation. Often we find ourselves that when we are envious of others, like the older brother being envious of his younger brother, we misunderstand our Heavenly Father, that He loves us and that He doesn't rate us to what we have. He loves both brothers and us as well because of our relationship with Him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the prodigal son would return to his father, let us gather our prayers and return to the Lord. For the church that she may shine in the world as a beacon of hope to those who suffer from violence, poverty, or injustice, we pray. And particularly today for the end of the war in Ukraine and Russia. For those who are striving to rebuild areas affected by war or natural disasters, that they may help the people to find life in the Lord, we pray. For all the poor and downtrodden, that they may experience the hand of God providing for them just as manna was provided for the Israelites, we pray. For all those who like the prodigal son and lose their way, that they may experience this period of Lent as a time to return to the Father, 
we pray. For those who have gone before us in faith, especially for those for whom this Mass is offered, and for our families and friends, that they may be brought into the peace of God's presence with all their sins forgiven, we pray. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. O oh God, we bless you at all times, and your praise is ever on our lips. Hear then our prayer and draw us close to your loving embrace, that we might love and serve you all the days of our life, through Christ our Lord. Forty days and forty nights You were fasting in the wild Forty days and forty nights Tempted and yet undefiled Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. My dear friends, let us still continue to pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you, and lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious year, gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with a joy, joy of minds made pure, so that, more, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which we have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other some sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Again we keep his solemn fast, a gift of faith from ages past. This Lent which binds us lovingly to faith and hope and charity. Again, this morning, our second collection is going to help us defray, defray some of the costs and projects that we're working on. Right now, we're working on trying to get some idea of what can be done with our back al front altar. So again, that is in the process of being worked out. And as soon as we get more results, I'll let you know more about it. But it's in the process right now of c coming up with some kind of a design and what do we want. 
Also, on Friday evenings, we have Mass at 5. We have Stations of the Cross at 5.30. And we have a supper afterwards. And I'd like to invite you to, at least one time, come and do the Stations with us and celebrate the liturgy and then have a meal with us. You know, as we had so many people here for, for Ash Wednesday, I think it's important in some way that we continue that wanting to be here, that we want to be able to be with each other and celebrate as we journey through this season of Lent. O God, who enlightened everyone to come into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see.